All right, what's going on, the people of YouTube? Welcome back, and damn, does it feel good to be back talking to you guys. Um, I haven't had a chance to do one of these videos in a very long time. I kind of left my YouTube family abandoned, and for that reason, I do apologize. Um, the reason why I haven't been uploading as much as I promised, and I'm still trying to upload, is because I recently been doing Twitch. I, I created a Twitch about two years ago, and I really didn't start taking it seriously. I just wanted to focus on YouTube, because I didn't think my PC could. Turns out I was kind of wrong. So I started streaming, started playing with the settings a little bit more, and I was like, damn, you know, I'm actually kind of getting good at this. You know, I'm actually starting to understand how bit rates and things work. And I will do a detailed guide if got people are new and want to stream. I'm thinking about doing a, a guide to show new streamers who don't have like a really high end PC, like my PC is not super high end, and that want to stream at pretty good quality. I might go into that. Anyway, it's a different story, different video for a different time. Bottle it up, throw it away. So anyway, since I hit my affiliate status, I've been live on Twitch about three days a week for eight hours straight so if you guys want to see more of me catch me there at twitch tv slash majestic jester i stream there a shit ton and i get the highlights up onto the youtube channel for people who can't make twitch or some people who just cannot make it that day you know um and i'm about to start doing just youtube projects alone start doing creative stuff for you guys we'll get into that it's a whole nother video but bottle it up that's why i haven't been uploading as much that's why and i do apologize but today i have some downtime i'm caught up on videos I got all kinds of shit coming out for you guys in the next week. I actually have some editors who, who are helping me low key, which is nice. So I will be pushing out a lot more content for you guys in the future. That's a promise. Um, anyway, let's get into the juicy stuff. E3 is right around the corner, boys and girls. And uh, that is fantastic. I'm super happy about that. Anyway, today, basically what I'm just going to be talking about is my E3 wish list. Kind of what I want to see at E3, what I want to happen at E3. Um, games that were either announced a couple E3s ago and maybe we'll get more of them this E3 or games that are announced that we haven't really got more information on and I want more information on this E3. Um, and basically just things like that. Just things that I want to happen. This is not any specific order. This is just me going off the top of my head. Just kind of things that I want to talk about. Um, but anyway, so the first game that I really, really, really hope is announced at E3. And I'm actually going to put both these games in the same category as one and two or two and one whatever it doesn't matter that is kingdom hearts 3 and final fantasy 7 we know that got announced about two years ago we have been getting more on kingdom hearts 3 we know that it was in development when it was announced e3 of 20 what was it 2016 um we know it's in the development same thing with final fantasy 7 and we got a little bit of gameplay but we haven't got a full on gameplay i want to see a full on demo of both i want to see more about final fantasy 7 Basically, Squaresoft Enix just announced these games and then two years completely went off the grid. We have no information on it. We know that it's happening, but we don't know what. We know that Final Fantasy VII is going to be a four-piece uh, four game, so it's going to be like episodes, which I don't know how I feel about that. It's kind of cool that they're kind of keeping their original disc thing that they did for PlayStation 1, where you guys know you had the four disc and like two hours on each disc or three hours or whatever so that's really cool and i think that's a cool concept that they're kind of sticking to that og route of things but i would still like to see more you know like damn i want to know more like you know more about the gameplay mechanics is it going to play like 15 which is another game we'll be playing later on this year um is it you know is it going to be like 13 kind of like it looks like a 3d model but still turn based i mean how the hell is it going to play it looks open world it looks kind of sick but i like to see more on it in the future anyway that's my first one. Second one kingdom hearts 3 same thing was in development crisis we know this game is coming it was supposed to come out on ps3 it kind of skipped the whole damn generation so it's been about 10 years um and then final fantasy being even longer than that so i definitely want to see more of these games at e3 all right, moving on to my second game, and this is a game that I think you guys are super excited for. I am hella excited for, and that is the new From Software game, which we are crossing our fingers and hoping to God that it's Bloodborne 2. A lot of you guys said it's Tenchu 2. A lot of you guys are saying it's fucking some other game that came out years ago that they never made a sequel to. There's a lot of theories going on out there and from software knows exactly what the hell they're doing and that's why they gave us that little 20 second teaser if you guys haven't seen my reaction to it it is on my youtube channel i'll link the i'll put the link in the description for you guys to check out um but basically it's just a little quick teaser it shows like a bloody cloth being strung out it's like rope with blood in it and it says shadows uh die twice or shadows never die twice or something like that i don't know it's been forever since i watched it but 
basically to that nature them announcing a new game and uh, shadows die twice is like a huge reference and a lot of people are like doing all this breakdown analysis but it's so hard to break down because it's only like 30 seconds but i'm super excited as you guys know i'm a huge dark souls fan the full dark souls 3 playthrough blind playthrough is on my youtube channel it is from years ago and i apologize for the way that i acted <laughs> So you guys can check that out. That, that is from a very, very long time ago. But I had a blast playing it. It's a very fun series. Same thing with Bloodborne. I did beat Bloodborne, but I never got the chance to record it. Because I never got into YouTube or anything like that. Um, until later on in my life. So I do apologize for the people who want the Bloodborne playthrough. We might go back and play it. I think I'm Jinx has it on PS4 now. So maybe if a new game is announced and we get to see more of it. Like Bloodborne 2. For like Flashback or Throwback Thursday or something. We'll stream Bloodborne um, duos or something. I might get Austin or Jinx to do it with me. Um, and we'll go into it and do some crazy stuff. So that's definitely another one. I'm, I'm super excited to see what they do. Or even if it's just a new game with a new IP and everything. I'm cool with that too. I'm hoping for Bloodborne too. Because Bloodborne I feel like is a fucking masterpiece. Um, I hated Bloodborne for the PvP side of things. I thought the PvP was whack. Being a Dark Souls PvP player and just slaughtering people with backstabs and parries and getting really good at it. Going to Bloodborne, which was a super fast paced game. The PvP I did I disliked a lot. But the story itself is fucking phenomenal. Um, the world is like it's got this gothic theme. Uh, the best way to explain it is it reminds me of you guys ever played Castlevania Curse of Darkness back on PlayStation 2. And it was the Castlevania where you got summonings and stuff. A lot of people hated that one. I personally, it's one of my favorites besides uh, Symphony of the Night. Um, but it's kind of got that nostalgic feel to it, that gothic theme, you know, with the big old churches and the big old, old buildings. And it's just a, a it's just a really good game, and I can talk about it all day, and I'm not going to. If you guys haven't played it, please check it out. But if it is Bloodborne 2, we'll definitely do a, well, even if it's not, we're still going to go back and play Bloodborne. Fuck it, I've already said it. So we're going to do it. But... Um, definitely can't wait from From Software, so that's going to be my third game on the list. <clears throat> Alright, so moving on. My fourth game that I want to see more of at E3, or I hope does get announced at E3. Um, that is going to be Gears of War 5. As you guys know, I do have some Gears of War 4 videos. My Gears of War 4 peeps, I know you guys are mad at me because I haven't played Gears of War in months. Um, but I do love Gears of War for what it is. I actually pl started playing Xbox 360. The very first game I got for Xbox 360 that I played was Gears of War. It was actually at a friend's house um, years ago, like 2008, 2009. Um, so like, t it's been a while. It's been about 10 years since I played Gears of War 1 for the first time. I was very young. Um, and that's what really got me into competitive gaming was Gears of War 1. So it has a very special place in my heart just because, you know, I was this 13, 14 year old kid just bodying grown men on Gears of War. And the environment was kids were not taken friendly in that game because it's super competitive. It's like a lot of older generation. So, you know, I was a, uh, I was very talented at my age at that game and I, I met some, some amazing and humble pe people, some amazing humble experiences. So that game does have a special place in my heart. Gears of War 1 all the way through Gears of War 3. I remember having and this is gonna sound crazy but i remember having snow days as a kid with my friends like before class and i remember <coughs> we would have like two hour delays and like instead of instead of going to school we would like literally stay in bed we'd wake up we'd check to see if we had a delay and then we'd be like all right get on gears of war and we play gears of war too and then sometimes we would just fucking skip school the whole day which like you know we're not going to school today fuck it you know it's too cold the roads are bad we don't want to go we just fucking, or if, even if we had a snow day, we would just play Gears of War 2 all day. You know, I remember River, Jacinto, Avalanche, these maps clear as day. Um, and I would like to see more. I would like to, and even Gears of War 4, which I haven't played a lot of Gears of War 4, like I said. But the story mode was fantastic. I love the Gears of War story, even going forward into future date with JD and Kat, Marcus, Barrett, Cole. You know, even till this day, you know, 10 years later, I guess Gears of War has been gone for like a decade now. It's still got a uh, an amazing story mode. It's still got an amazing multiplayer. Gears of War 4 was still kind of like wonky with wall bouncing and stuff, and the Nasher updates, of course. But that's every Gears of War game. Um, so it's still wonky and stuff like that, but it wasn't terrible. So I would like to see Gears of War 5 hopefully announced. I think that'd be super sick. It's about time. It's been about two to three years now. So Gears of War came out in 20 is it 16, 2015, something like that. So it's been a while. 
So it's definitely time for a New Year's of War. Um, moving on, my number fifth thing on this list, or my fifth game that I would like to see at E3 this year. Um, and this is actually probably the biggest one, and I know you guys are like, we've been waiting on him to say this one. And I'm saving it for last because it's just like my top five games that I want. I don't think I'm going to go into like full graphic detail on what I want. But you guys know what I want. You guys know that I've been talking about this game forever. And I was going to do a video separately all about it. But I really didn't get the chance to due to like just video streaming and stuff like that. But that is, and I will quote, Mortal Kombat 11. I know it's coming. You guys know it's coming. I haven't talked about it at all, and there is a reason for that, I promise. Um, you guys know how I feel about NetherRealm Studio games. It's what made my channel. It's the reason that I started becoming a YouTuber. It's the reason that I started becoming a streamer. Um, it's because of the fighting games, and Mortal Kombat and Injustice were the games that started my channel. And uh, I love them. I loved Injustice 1. I'm not a huge fan of Injustice 2. I loved Injustice 1. I played Injustice 1 about as much as I played MKX. I never played MK9 competitively just because the netcode on MK9 was fucking terrible. And I just couldn't, I couldn't bear it. Then Injustice came out and the netcode was kind of bad, but it was like functionable. And you're like, eh, this is still a pretty good game, you know? And I, I put a lot of time into it and I had pretty good matches for the most part, you know? I never really lagged or anything like that. And then MK Next came out, and then its fucking netcode was awful until after the first patch, and then after the update, it was the best fighting game netcode on the fucking planet. And that that's big facts. I wish I could make it up. I know a lot of you guys out there, Street Fighter fans or whatever, we can talk about it, we can argue about it, we can fight about it. Mortal Kombat has had the best netcode on the planet. The only thing that even remotely competes with its netcode would be Killer Instinct, and that is it. There are games coming out now that have good netcodes, um, but I feel like MKX still, till this day, has one of the best netcodes in fighting games. And I've played a lot. I've played Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Its netcode's not that great. It's okay. Dragon Ball Fighter's netcode, let's not even talk about it because it's still not fixed. I mean, we can go on. Injustice 2's netcode is, I, I guess you could say better, but I mean, it's Netherrealm, so that doesn't count, right? So, anyway. Mortal Kombat X, I'm super excited. The reason why I'm super excited for this game is because, like I said, I love the game. I loved how fast it, how fast-paced it is. My hopes and dreams for it is I want them to bring it back. I don't want them to do... I know that the game changes every time. Every time there's a new game, they add some new mechanic. MKX, the new thing, was variations, which a lot of people love. Um, I personally love, too, because it's like playing a whole brand new character from start to finish. And I have no problem with that. So... I'm super cool if they decide to do that again and bring back these character variations, but if they don't, then I, I kind of want to know what they're going to do. Like, the variations are cool, so I want them to bring that back, but maybe do something different, like, or maybe, like, do something that they did a long time ago. The only thing that I could remotely think of that would still be cool and relevant is that they gave you the ability to switch stances like you could in the old games, like Deception, Alliance, and stuff like that. Maybe brought in weapons that you could switch between, but in the MKX style. So, like, for instance, you know how, like, how clunky MK4 was, and how wonky Deception was where they had a, a weapon, and how weird and cheesy and animated? Of course, games have come a long way since then, but I would like to, I think that would be cool, you know, to have a weapon or switch stances mid-game just like they used to, but make it more fluent, more graphically enhanced more smooth you know we're in 2018 now we're not in playstation 2 era so i feel like they could do that easily or don't do anything at all just leave the variations give us new characters give us different variations of that character hey i'm completely cool with it a lot of people say they want this gear system back from injustice 2 me not a huge fan on it don't give a shit about it i hated the gear system i think it's cool the way you look but i don't want any I don't want what Injustice did at the beginning, where they gave you player matches, which were all based on gear, and then they gave you ranked matches, which weren't based on gear, but there wasn't any player matches without gear, if that makes sense, until later. They finally put in competitive versus mode, where it's like everybody can play on the same level without gear, so if they do something like that in MKX, or MK11, I'm sorry, then hopefully they keep the they don't fuck up the gear system basically if they do it they do it from scratch like okay we have a, a played mode that has gear we have a play mode that's just ranked and then we have a player mode where there's no gear involved you know like they have to do it and separate it to some extent so 
that's just kind of like my hopes and dreams for MK11. And of course, new characters. I would like to see some new characters. Maybe, you know, this is like 10 years in the future and Cassie has a kid, Takeda has a kid, Jackie has a kid, you know, maybe their kids have kids, you know, whatever. You know, however they want to do it, I don't care. But of course, I would like to see more. I'd like to see some returning characters. I'd like to see Noob Cybot return. Um, I'd like to see some sort of ninjas, a different ninja, like, you know, Smoke hasn't reappeared. We know he's dead or whatever. He's like in the story, but he's not like actually in the in the game, you know? So hopefully these old characters return that weren't in MKX. They were kind of like cameos, Fujin, another cameo. So, and if they do DLC, guest characters are all cool and I'm cool for that. You know, Injustice had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know? They also had some other guest characters that I can't think of at the top of my head, whatever. But I really, 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 if they do do guest characters, please make them comic book origin or something that fits into the world of Mortal Kombat. Yes, Leatherface was cool. Yes, Alien was cool. Predator, cool. These characters are fucking fantastic characters. Don't get me wrong. But I would like to see those characters knocked a lot of good characters that could have made it into the staff that a lot of people wanted. Like Noob Saibot, Smoke, Fujin, uh, I don't know, Mocap, Blaze, whoever. I mean, there's so many fucking Mortal Kombat characters. Cabal, Striker, I mean, whoever. They're, they could have put so many people in there and they, they chose to put guest characters. Which, I mean, again, super cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But then again, it is Mortal Kombat and I would like to see more characters from MK9. At least make a return in MK11. Um, but this is my top five list. Like I said, I would love to see more about Kingdom Hearts. I love to see more about Final Fantasy VII. I love to see more about the new Dark Souls game that's in the work from From Software. I would love to hear about Gears of War 5 if it's in the making. And of course, Mortal Kombat 11. Which is another game that I would definitely... Oh, that's the biggest game for me right now. At E3 is Mortal Kombat 11. I'm tired of Dragon Ball Z Fighter. I'm tired of Injustice. I'm tired of Tekken. I need a new fighter to play. I mean, I still love those games and I still casually play, play them. But to me, nothing was ever as hyped to me as MKX. I have over 100 videos on my channel. I have talked about it in so much passion. I've done reviews about it. I've broke it down. I've played tournaments in it. I mean, I've literally spent a fucking like almost two years into Mortal Kombat before it died so huge game for me that's my huge announcement if it does happen I'll probably cry in front of you guys on stream because I will be streaming E3 if I can get permission hopefully I can but that is my biggest game so these are just top five like I said on top of my head top the top five games that I want there are other games out there that I like to see I would love to see more or another battle royale game I'm having a lot of fun with Fortnite but it is kind of getting outplayed so I like to see something else you know, what are you guys' thoughts on games? You know, I'd like to talk to you guys. Is there any fighting games that you guys would like to see in the future? Um, is there any games in general at E3 that you're hoping to get announced? A lot of you guys want Halo 6, which I saw on the topic on Reddit. People want Halo 6 to come out, which it's about time for Halo. It's been a while since Halo 5 dropped, so that makes sense. A lot of you guys are talking about Battlefield 5. I'll check it out. Not a huge... I mean, I am a Battlefield fan, but it's not like a big game that I want. Call of Duty, Black Ops 4. You guys are super excited about that. Not a huge Call of Duty fan, but you know I understand where you're coming from. If Call of Duty if, Call if Modern Warfare 2 gets remastered, I'll definitely be a part of that. But anyway, to get off subject. Please leave in the comment section. What do you guys think? You guys super excited? You guys don't give a shit? Leave some comments about what games we'll talk about them and we'll discuss them. Anyway, my name is Majestic. Stay majestic, people. Peace.